a lot of the private rentals were beyond what I could afford. I wanted to actually advance myself. I wanted to sort of get ahead from what I was doing before. And so therefore I applied for uni and I was lucky enough to get in and accepted. So um, through the QUT here, oh, it's absolutely tailor-made for what I need. My daughter and I both live here. Kelvin Grove is so perfect because it's central. Um, the public transport here is perfect. The access to all things, you know, and especially when the, um, the shopping centre gets built, um, that'll be ideal. It will be absolutely ideal. My daughter actually attends the Kelvin Grove State College, and so it's just a walk away, five minutes walk away. Living in this community is fabulous. Um, it does actually have a very incredible community feel. Um, probably because of the diversity of people living here, I think is uh, one of the most magic things, um, especially with regards to having the elderly, um, mixed cultural diversity is fabulous. I was living at Mount Gravatt in a house that had four stairs at the front and 11 stairs, I think it was, at the back. I uh, never used the back stairs very often, you know, hardly ever used them anyway. And anyway, the owner of that particular house, when I found out that, when we found out that I'd, I was losing, I'd lost my leg and that, he refused to let the government put in a, a, uh, a ramp for me to use. Anyway, um, um, I got quite upset about that, but anyway, in the long run, I'm glad I'm not there now anyway, because the chair wouldn't have fitted in half the, half the doors anyway. So anyway, I was in hospital in rehab, and I was there for nearly 11 months, and um, the social worker in the ward that I was in, in rehab, she got a phone call um, from somebody at um, the Housing Commission suggesting that they try BHC. Yeah. And anyway, the, that's how it, um, how it worked out, that um, Sharon come to the hospital one day and brought me out, and as soon as we pulled up in the driveway, I said, that's it, that one there. And she says, how do you know that's one I'm going to show you? I said, that's it. I said, if I don't get that one, I don't want any. And um, it was just my colouring's green, yeah. And um, that's how it came about. And I'm as happy as a pig in mud. Brisbane Housing Company actually um, build the properties and then get managing agents such as Brisbane Borders to manage the tenancies for them. Okay, we have 103 tenants all told. Nearly every unit on the ground level is specially designed for people either in wheelchairs, walkers, um, people that have difficulty in reaching high or need um, a larger bathroom area because of their needs. The majority of them have come from backgrounds, um, homelessness, straight off the streets, come, in, come from boarding house closures, emergency accommodation, hostels, areas like that. Mainly people who have found it hard to get into the private rental market through either financial or other um, areas, on-site caretaker, and I'm here most times Monday to Friday, nine to five, for any of their, their needs. Main, main other options people have if they can't get into private rental is either sleeping on the streets or in emergency accommodation, hostels, boarding houses that are really should not have anyone living in them. Um, so they really need safe, secure, clean accommodation and that's exactly what Brisbane Housing Company is providing. We're not sitting on our backsides um, enjoying the fact that we've got these units now. We, we're looking to do some new models. Uh, we're working very hard at that um, because it might well be the case that the government in the future said, well, we've, we've given you a certain number of grants. Now, can you see if you can do things with less or no subsidy? So all of these things are being uh, worked up and I, I'm convinced that this company I mean, we're presently expending about $30 million a year on our development program. We're delivering about 220 to 250 units every year. I believe we'll sustain that level of output. 
I think some of the funding methods and, and, and techniques will evolve over the years, but we'll continue to make that level of contribution. I'd like to thank um, the State Government and the Council for what they've done. I also want to thank the board members and our staff because now with these initiatives that we're showing where lands are being released to us, not only do they provide for our accommodation, but we get surplus lands, which we're trying to maximise the use of them, so that we can then take that money and put it back into affordable housing. We trust in the future that we can become more independent with our own borrowings, provided that we can service all these debts, and we are working in uh, that way to be able to take out mortgages and create more and more housing. But this will enable us to achieve our target for a thousand units over the next few years. But I would welcome you to come to our, our offices in Spring Hill. We will share all that we have with you so that you can succeed wherever you are within Queensland. And I thank you for listening to me today. With the Brisbane housing, it's just been, yeah, it's just been brilliant.